here in Ireland, it may be assumed that because we're an island watched with plenty of rainfall, that our water is abundant and pristine. Unfortunately, this is often not the case. There are many pressures affecting our water quality, which if not addressed now, could cost billions to repair in the future. We've got 50% of our rivers and streams um, at risk. A significant amount of investment still needs to take place in Ireland to provide the water services that we need. As impacts on water in Ireland have been steadily increasing, our water quality has been quietly but readily decreasing. Last year, nearly 70,000 people were affected by boil water and restricted water use notices. There are only nine designated blue flag status areas for bathing in our total freshwater lakes. We suffer regular water shortages. Last year, nearly every county was affected at some point and the recent frost damage during last winter left thousands without water for days on end. The European Court of Justice ruled against Ireland for insufficient inspection of all on-site wastewater treatment systems, which are mostly septic tanks. We could be facing huge fines if we continue to be in breach. The EU have also issued a directive to all member states to achieve high water quality status by 2015. With the slow rate of remedial action by Ireland, it's hard to see us meeting this target. So what's causing this? How do we address it? How much will it cost? And where will the money come from? EcoEye has been reporting on Ireland's water for over 10 years. This year, we've decided to bring together all our research and information and put it together into one episode to tackle these questions. I'm going on a journey around Ireland to see the full extent of these water problems. I want to see what solutions are out there and learn what we can do now without breaking the bank on an already troubled economy. We source our freshwater supply from the river catchments around the country. Rainwater soaks into the soil percolates underground, funnels through our streams, rivers and lakes, and collects in the basins of our river catchments. This water replenishes our reservoirs where it's abstracted for human use. As the water from the catchments travels downstream, from the headwaters to the rivers, lakes and estuaries, it encounters many environmental factors that determine the standard of our water quality. My first port of call is to visit the upland headwaters of our catchments, where our water supplies should be at their purest. It's in these areas, where human impacts are scarce, that we find the cleanest water. I'm being shown around the Connemara catchments just outside Oakthorard in Galway by Dr. Martin McGarrigal of the EPA. Martin is one of Ireland's leading water quality experts and has been advising us for the last decade on all aspects of water in Ireland. So we're basically trying to kick up the Okay, we're on the Glengar Beg. It's a, an upper tributary of the Owen Riff River that flows down into Uchtarard. Um, it's a headland stream. And we're very concerned about a lot of these headland rivers because they're coming under pressure. They should be the best quality of the lot, really. But um, we've been losing them, and, and we're very concerned to protect the high-status ones because we don't have that many of them. And across Europe, there's not that many of them either. So these are really important. The quality status of Ireland's headwaters was amongst the highest in Europe, but this quality has been reducing in recent years. A good indicator of this is the decline of the Irish freshwater pearl mussel, which acts as a natural water filter. Unfortunately, with reducing high water quality status, these protected pearl mussels are now seriously threatened with extinction. So what are the main environmental pressures on the river up here? Okay, the main pressures that would be the, the forestry, peat cutting, turf cutting, you know, silt coming from that. 
and there's some low intensity agriculture as well. Sheep overgrazing was a big issue in the uplands in the 90s especially. It's coming back under control gradually. And then even the smallest pressure really can have an effect on the quality of the river and, and the, especially the ecology. Headwaters are very sensitive to impacts from farm animals, forestry and peat harvesting, causing acidification and siltation. Phosphate and nitrate runoff causes excessive growth of algae and reduced oxygen to ecosystems. Um, so you have your, you have your okay. on the top there, there's quite a bit of algae on that one, like right. it's not, okay. it's, it shouldn't. That shouldn't be there. shouldn't be there, this should be perfectly clean really. Right, okay, so that algae, sign, really? that's a sign of what? Sign of nutrients coming down from sign the upper the catchment. And in this case, it's probably the forestry. Biological sampling is a very accurate predictor of water quality. Okay. Martin can test this by examining the insect and invertebrate life in the water. There's a delicate living ecosystem in this water comprising of over 150 different types of insects and invertebrate. And each of these species is sensitive to certain types of water pollution. So, depending on what type of animal life we find in the water and what ones are missing, Martin can grade very accurately the quality of the water and what contaminants are affecting it. Now, there's a stonefly there. That's a stonefly. And he's only pearl. got two, two, two tails. tails. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's little caddis flies there. They're filter feeders. They usually get them below lakes. And what's this fella here? See this and then that, that's, no, that's, that's a nice mayfly, it's called Ectoneurus. That's you know, a mayfly? That's, a, that's the most common one in rivers. So the variety of species that you're finding here, how important are they in identifying the quality of the water? Yeah. So, I mean, some of them are, are quite tolerant of pollution, but we've got a good few, like the mayflies, they're quite sensitive. If we don't get them, we would rate the river down. So generally what now from the sample you've got here, what is it telling us about?